ಶಿವ ಸಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೌಂಡ್ ದ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ಆರ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ without the grace of the guru nothing is possible so salutations to that great lineage of the gurus starting from the supreme being down to all the teachers in our life and the guru within our heart we are looking at uh, we are at uh, studying kathopanishad and we are in the first chapter third part verse number 4 we have to start today and here the first it was told that there are two where where are we one moment <coughs> ಋತಂಪಿ ಬಂತೌಸು ಕೃತಸ್ಯ ಲೋಕೆ ಗುಹಾಂ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಟೌ ಪರಮೇ ಪರಾರ್ಧೆ ಛಾಯಾತಪೌ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿಧೋ ವದಂತಿ ಪಂಚಾಗ್ನೋಯ ಚತೃಣಾಚಿಕೇತ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಸೀಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾವಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಎಂಜಾಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ಸ್ and the knowers of brahman uh, call them shadow and light one is the light of the nature of light and the other is shadow one is the original other is the uh, reflection and uh, and and so also not only those knowers of reality but also those who uh, invoke the five panchagni those who invoke the five fires they also uh, and and also those people who have propitiated the uh, nachiket agni three times this was this we had explained so first point that is made by yamaraj in the third part is that there are two beings and this is every one of our experience that there is a waker there is a dreamer there is a sleeper who is waking dreaming sleeping i am who knows that waking dreaming sleeping are going on because waking dreamer and sleep, waker dreamer and sleeper can never enter into each other's area of influence the waker can never experience the dream the dreamer can never experience the waking and so also they cannot interpolate into each other each other's area then who knows all the three i know are which one am i am i the one who is these three or am i the one who is other than these three ho gaya na do so this so am i just just as a as a person am i the man or am i the father am i the man or am i the husband 
so this point was brought to us and then it was told in the second verse yase tu rijananam aksharam brahma yat param abhayam titirshatam param nachiketam shakemahi so it was told that may we yes say to uh, say to re jana naam aksharam brahma yat param that may we uh, shakemahi that may we master that uh, nachiket agni yeah, uh, or vaishwana ragni which was its original name and what is this vaishwana ragni or nachiket agni it is the bridge for those who perform sacrifices you invoke when you think you are the individual you invoke this fire to to recognize that you are the infinite one or the total one here it is infinite one and also as that uh, 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 then it was told abhayam titirshatam param nachiketam shakemahi and and by invoking invocation of this fire uh, and mastering this fire sacrifice uh, which is the bridge uh, 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 for those who are performing the sacrifices whenever we say i have to do something to realize we are performing something it does not matter whether you are performing it outside as puja or havan or pilgrimage or it can be seeing uh, I, i want to control my senses it could be i am doing pranayam it is all doing that i am doing japa sadhana it is doing i am doing yoga it is doing i am doing dharana dhyan samadhi it is doing but as we move from outside to inside this is the bridge what will help you to go from outside to inside meaning what will help you to go from individuality to absolute it is the nachiket agni for who for those people who think they are the doer that they have to do something and therefore they must what are we doing we are involving in the world enjoying the movies and uh, eating and sleeping and all, all you know what you are doing so here if at all you have to do you do you act you perf- you do the invocation of the nachiket agni the vaishwana ragni and become a master of it and what will happen as a result and and by mastering it uh, uh one becomes fearless then the fear of survival fear of uh desire that uh, i i don't want to die without experiencing uh, himalayas i don't want to die ex- without experiencing my roots i don't want to die uh, with regrets uh, i wish uh, w- when i was healthy and I, uh, uh, and I was able to talk and speak and think and didn't have alzheimers or dementia i had sorted out my problems with the people uh, uh, i had uh, you know tiff with or even in relations all these regrets come to haunt us and that fear that it dev- that builds inside it's a killer such people then are not able to sleep forget about sleep they are not able we are talking at a very general worldly level they are not able to sit quiet they are not able to contemplate they are not able to do anything forget where is the question of realization it's not a wishful thinking we have to invoke and therefore here it says they become fearless and and are able to cross the ocean of samsara uh, so in this way uh, the one who reaches aksharam brahma yat param that supreme goal that supreme brahman when one is one has attained realized it thereafter he becomes abhayam hmm. uh, and then last week we saw this verse आत्मानं रथिनं विद्धि शरीरं रथमेव तु बुद्धिं तु सारथिं विद्धि मन प्रग्रहमेव च 
then it was told that vidhi vidhi means no what no what no that the now an analogy is given so that we are, through which we are able to recognize what was told in the first verse ritam pe bandau who are these two who are enjoying the fruits who are these who are these two me <laughs> the two eyes if if it's just because we are split within ourselves just like we are split just like a, a husband when he a man when he gets married and brings a young wife into the home and he is living with his parents he is split should i be listening to the young wife who has left everything and come into he has brought home or they have decided to live together after marriage or should i be listening to my mother it's a split and he goes crazy the one who goes crazy is the husband he doesn't know go go this way or to the he, you can't make anyone happy and that's exactly what is happening to us that we are split within are we the constant last week this was the point are we the constant one or are we the changing one we have to determine how do we determine how do we come to the con- con- come to a conclusion about a, who we are actually so this analogy is taken and he says that no that the atma atman atmanam rathinam vidhi no that the lord of the chariot is the atman the self then shariram ratham evatu and the chariot is the uh, body uh, and within that uh, so uh, uh, the the lord of the chariot sits in the chariot the chariot takes him everywhere if you are going in a taxi you, acha bhai i want to go to airport uh, you go you cannot do that you have to sit in the taxi to go to airport exactly the same way you are sitting in this chariot of the body uh, 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 body and uh, the body takes you wherever and then it says with buddhim tu sarathim vidhi buddhi is the sarathi buddhi the discriminative intellect is the uh, charioteer see yesterday i was going with someone and they were driving swami ji i will drive you well i yaar chalo chalo you drive me i was taking my car no i will drive you okay drive but continue driving the, the wheel is going like this like all the time they are not able to keep the lane is it the excitement because swami ji is with them is it nervousness from within see some people they keep walking and keep banging into walls and into desks and into chairs and are i'm sorry oops i'm sorry oops i'm sorry oops i'm sorry <laughs> you must have come across see so buddhim tu sarathim vidhi the discriminative intellect she that intellect discriminative intellect is the sarathi the stronger the intellect the more clear the in, stronger does not mean egoistically strong but that intellect which knows we the we use the word discriminative discrimination means that intellect which is able is continuously available to the discrimination is on the job of discrimination what is the job of discrimination what is constant and what is changing what is real and what is unreal what is permanent and what is impermanent what is infinite and what is finite what is changing changeless and what is changing that is discriminative intellect 
discrimination is not should i read katopanishad or should i read isha vasu upanishad this is not discrimination oh they say the right eye is the sun left eye is the moon okay i'll read the scriptures with my right eye and lage raho bye bhur bhur swat tatvid ruvarna bargo deva se divai the sun is in the right eye <laughs> right eye se dekh rahe ho see <laughs> it's not it, this is not the way so a strong a discriminative intellect which knows which is able to at a given any given moment is able to sift away the real from the unreal from the constant from, from is able to discriminate between the constant and the changing only such an intellect uh, uh, such an intellect is the sa- sarathi if the if the if the if the intellect is weak you know you must have come across people who get car- uh, ayaram gayaram someone comes and says hey your uh, your daughter was doing this acha aise kar rahi thi sham ko aake daughter ki briefing ho gayi then next day someone says hey you know your car is stolen bahar ja ke oh my god my car is stolen just now i bought it how many of people you have come across who determine their knowledge based on other people outside input see based on outside input you write a letter you can you know what you have written but can you please check what it is it is right correctly written or not correctly written i am not sure if i have written it correctly can you then you give to 10 people and all 10 will give you some feedback if you if you are not clear why you have given it to them if you are not clear why you are writing that letter or writing that book or writing whatever or giving a lecture like this if you are not clear how will you uh, express see because then your what you are writing is influenced by other people's uh, inputs that is okay at the worldly level in spirituality that doesn't work we are here re- studying upanishad it is brahma vidya and that brahma vidya is not separate to you we are not talking about thought knowledge we are talking about the knowledge of which is the self itself understand the 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 what the topic uh, we are pursuing manah pragraham evacha and the uh, and the mind is the reins and in this way we saw this i and i told you that yesterday last week that the, the, this chariot uh, analogy is also the theme of the bhagavad gita this is how the bhagavad gita begins in the middle of the two armies the kauravas and the pandavas the chariot chariot is the chariot is standing in which the master of the chariot the lord of the chariot is arjuna there also we see the chariot with the horses with the rain and we see the charioteer which is the seat of discriminative intellect who is sitting there the ultimate person lord krishna himself with complete clarity and who is arjuna there he is supposed to be the self a realized master also has an intellect shankaracharyas of today satya sai baba shirdi sai baba ramakrishna baba, you think they didn't have intellect they also have intellect but and they are realized masters is arjuna a realized master no 
what has happened to arjuna he has lost the plot somewhere he has lost the plot somewhere and he is listening even though he has the lord krishna as his charioteer to take his chariot in the right direction but he became over confident and the job of the charioteer charioteer is only one to take you to your destination the job of the charioteer is to take you to your destination negotiate through the traffic what is the destination of arjuna to fight the war and what is he having what is he doing he is confused what is his role in the middle of the two armies he has lost the plot see so what if we have lord krishna as our charioteer he will put the confusion he'll clear the confusion if we are available like arjuna was available see so then what do we have to do we have to place the discriminative our intellect must be surrendered to the lord from a devotee's point of view for that you have to make a decision is it surrendered to relations possessions uh, dreams imaginations or is it surrendered to the divine principle the constant principle intellect has to be used see then solution may present itself in this lifetime that's what the, that's how the masters are living and this is how maharishi ved vyas who was the composer of the mahabharata he wrote the mahabharat and in that in the middle of the bhishma parva the bhagavad gita comes and in that bhagavad gita uh, the whole, the first scene that is presented by uh, uh, maharishi ved vyas is the scene uh, uh, sena yor ubhayor madhe that in the middle of the two armies uh, arjuna is ordering the lord arjuna is ordering the lord let me see who has come to fight and what is the job of uh, the uh, lord krishna there he was waiting for the whole life of arjuna that one day he will ask me the right question but arjuna has never asked intellect is also waiting in us that we are, we the ego the individual asks the right question hey intellect i want to know what the truth is but what do we use the intellect for intellect Ah, uh, you have to be single pointed. You have to be focused for what? For investment, for house, for sleep, for food. Genuinely, you tell, ask yourself in your entire life of thirty, forty, fifty years, sixty years, some of them seventy, eighty also. How much time have we spent in giving the order to intellect? hey i don't know what you have to, what you do or what you don't do but i want to recognize and realize who i am how many times have we said that to ourselves to our intellect given that instruction to it and not backed away after that arjuna also never did but when he when till now it was a friendship now it is a war and krishna is krishna bhagwan is sitting at that seat of the charioteer and arjuna is asking a wrong question he is ordering the lord 
instead of surrendering over over confident let me don't you know who is going to come and fight in the war please take the chariot in the middle of the two armies i want to see who has come to fight the war are you stupid but one mistake is enough one accident is enough one mishap is enough one loss in our life sometimes can make us go within just like when we go for funerals are yaar apna bhi ek din din aayega we go inside <laughs> so that one moment arjuna when he asked that question take my chariot in the middle of the two armies to see who has come to fight krishna bola krishna ne krishna lord krishna said now you have come under my i'll show you now who has come to fight in the moment he showed him the grandfather the brothers and the teacher there was immediate break identity crisis of arjuna he forgot that he was a warrior he became suddenly the grandson and the student and the brother of a, 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 who were standing in front of him are we succumbing the same way when when life is pr- coming in front of us on at a moment by moment basis do we forget who we are so how this crisis comes it will be explained later and you can come out of the crisis only and only if the intellect is strong strong meaning discriminative and this was the uh, so almost 10 mantras from kathopanishad have been directly taken into bhagavad gita so now we come into uh, uh what do you call in the fourth verse and this uh, this analogy of the chariot it is coming in the shweta shweta upanishad also eventually we'll take it one day when it whenever its time comes so now the fourth verse repeat indriyani haya nahu hu indriyani haya nahu hu vishayan steshu gocharan vishayan steshu gocharan आत्मेन्द्रिय मनोयुक्त आत्मेन्द्रिय मनोयुक्त भोक्ते त्याहुर्मनीषिण भोक्ते त्याहुर्मनीषिण टुगेदर इंद्रिया हया नाहु विषयास्तेषु गोचरा आत्मेन्द्रिय मनोयुक्त भोक्ते त्याहुर्मनीषिण इट सेज दैट दे से देंसेस एंड एंड if intellect is discrimination what is mind see this is very important if intellect discriminates what does mind do what is the quality of the mind instinctiveness so are we instinctive or are we discriminative instinctive if instinctiveness is not backed by proper knowledge it will lead to disaster so here he says that indriyani hayana huhu vishayas teshu gocharan the senses uh, uh, are the horses 
So here analogy is being taken. The senses are the horses. What are the senses? Seeing, hearing, touching, feeling, tasting. These are the five senses. And what is the instinct? The mind. So, uh, uh, Vishayans Teshu Gocharan. Gocharan means they go. Where do the five senses go? They go on their paths. And what is the path of uh, the, the path of the eyes of the vision of seeing is color and form. The path, the road on which this horse travels is the color and form. The road on which the horse called the ears travels, the, the ability to hear, that is the sounds. The tongue travels, taste. The nose travels, smell. The skin, skin travels, uh, touch. So seeing here, to see, to hear, to touch, to feel, to taste are the roads on which these five senses go. Uh, Indriyani hayana huhu vishayans teshu gocharan. Atmendriya mano yuktam bhokte tyahur manishinaha. And the wise manishinaha, the wise people, manishi, the wise, uh, they call him the enjoyer. They call him the enjoyer. Who is? Bhoktya, bhok, huh? the, the wise call him the enjoyer when he is united with the body and the senses and the mind. So, who is identified with the body, the senses and the mind? Now, don't forget the chariot. Who is the, for whom is the chariot? Is it for the horse? No. Is it for the mind? No. Is it for the intellect? No. For whom? For the lord of the chariot. Who is the lord of the chariot? The self. Self is neither the karta nor the bhokta. It is not the doer nor it is the enjoyer. Then for whom is the enjoyment? Now you come into the picture. Make it subjective. Then who is the enjoyer? Though when the self considers or identifies with the chariot, the body, the senses, the horses, and the mind, the reins. The one who is identified with these three, for he is called the enjoyer. See where we are going wrong now. We may be listening to Upanishads. We may be reading Bhagavad Gita. We may be listening to many things on uh, YouTube. Is it leading to <coughs> disidentification? Disidentification does not mean that you you will not you will not think about the body. The body will be there, but you are not concerned about it. Senses are there. You are not concerned about them. What is concern? Not giving value and importance to the body, mind and what, what is it? The body, mind and the senses. For that intellect has to be employed. That hey, I am the supreme, the, I am the pristine, I am the immaculate, I am the untouched, I am the complete absolute self. That's what the scriptures are saying. But I see myself, sometimes I am carried away by the senses, sometimes I am carried away by the imaginations in the mind, sometimes I am carried away by the pains in the body. So who is running your life? Is our life being run by body? Is our run, life being run by the mind? Or is our life being run by the senses? It will lead to a crash. When these three fellows are determining 
दे आर द लॉर्ड इट विल लीड टू क्रैश इट विल लीड टू डिप्रेशन इट विल लीड टू ऑब्सेशन इट विल लीड टू थॉट फिक्सेशन लाइक सम पीपल वन ऑफ माई फ्रेंड्स I can't sleep in hotels. I I need my pillow and my bed only. The husband says, "Are you sure? Kaisi bivi mili hai? I can't go for travel anywhere. Everywhere I go, I have to take my pillow and my sheet and everything. She has to carry it. I don't care. But I I have to pick up the suitcase. See, this is my house." as if house has house has become the all in all my house same way my body this is who i am ho gaya so when a pers- when the self as if identifies with the body senses and the mind the rule is it is called as the enjoyer and once it enjoys it wants to do something in order to continue the enjoyment <laughs> see you did not ha uh, let's keep it that way so so therefore the identified self is called karta and bhokta doer and enjoyer these are the two tentacles or the two horns or the two two with these two expressions we recognize the ego are we a doer are we an enjoyer do we do everything only to enjoy understand ego is functioning then kya farak padta hai who cares if it happens it happens it doesn't happen it doesn't happen that attitude and yet you function in life how masters function they are established in the self yet they are so productive in their life how ego can never be productive anyway all those points will become later i am one moment ha huh? i didn't open my ah uh, kahan gaya just one moment we will do it i am looking for something Hmm. Ha. Ah. So uh so let's read the uh, bhashya bhashya says Indriyani chakshura dini hayan ahu rathakalpa kalpana kushalaha शरीर रथकर्षण सामान्यात सो दोज हु आर वॉट यू कॉल हा दोज पीपल हु आर नॉलेजेबल दोज हु आर वर्स्ट इन इन you know some people are experts in writing poetry doing shayari uh, uh composing uh, 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 verses in sanskrit today someone asked swami ji i know one person and he is with a great master and 
he is a great sanskrit scholar he can remember everything from so many different scriptures he must be realized isn't it no it's another ego trip so those here we are talking about that those who are well versed in uh, uh, in creating or calling up the imaginary imagery of the chariot the chariot uh, uh, indriyani the senses the eyes and the hayan hayan is the horses and uh, आहु रथकल्पना कुशला रथकल्पना दोज हू आई इमेजिन एंड हॉर्सेज एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द सिमिलैरिटी ऑफ ड्रॉइंग द चैरियट एंड द बॉडी एंड बिकॉज जस्ट एज द द चैरियट इज पुल्ड फॉरवर्ड सिमिलरली दिस बॉडी इज ऑल्सो moving and therefore they have imagined that they have, they have uh, compared the body as the chariot teshu eva indriyeshu hayatvena parikalpiteshu gocharan margan rupadin vishayan vidhi then he says that teshu those those very senses hey those what are those senses senses are compared to the horses and no vishayan the objects what is the job of the senses it the job of the senses is to know the objects the vishaya the vishaya okay let's see what what they say further to so, the vishaya means vishaya means the object now remember one thing <laughs> it's just coming to me what is that the what is the word vishaya means subject object right what is it made up of wish wish is poison vishaya is like poison so vishaya when we indulge in vishaya this is the beauty of sanskrit language when we indulge in when we indulge in the vishaya and the word vishaya is made up of wish poison involvement with involvement in vishaya leads to poisoning anyway that is not given in the shankar bhasha <laughs> i am adding my little bit to it okay so uh, vishaya and and we have all i have already explained the eyes go in their area the ears go in the sounds the nose go into the smell and so on and then then he says that ah uh, uh, with the then gocharan margan rupadin vishayan vidhi know that each sense has its field of engagement and that is its road that is the object that it follows you cannot interpolate ears cannot think that today i want to go go and see see the colors and forms they cannot do it the ears say no no i want to hear they cannot do it tongue cannot say i want to hear it cannot do it each one has its own specific uh, field of engage object of engagement and that is called as the vishaya atmendriya mano yuktam sharirendriya mano bihi sahitam sanyuktam atmanam bhokteti sansari sansariti ahur manishinaha vivekinaha here it is told that uh, uh, the discriminating people uh, who are these uh, vivekinaha vivekina means the discriminating people who are these discriminating people the 
what do they say they call the self as associated that self which is associated with the body mind and senses as the bhokta hmm? here it sharir sharir indriya manobihi sahitam sanyuktam atmanam bhok bhokteti so they call him the bho Uh, the enjoyer, they call him the bhokta. Bhokta means enjoyer, and in this way, uh, bhokta, the enjoyer, and who is this bhokta? Now, don't don't forget, you are going to sleep to enjoy sleep. You are going. You imagine to enjoy imaginations. You want to run after seeing, hearing, touching, feeling, tasting only to enjoy. No, nobody goes after any object for becoming miserable. So I am sitting here. If I get cold, I put the heater on. Object is the heater switch. Why do I put it on? Because I am not happy with cold. I want the heater. It gives me joy. For whom it gives the joy? To the skin. And through the skin to the mind. whose mind uh, the one who is identified with the mind the one who is saying it is my mind see and this go this goes on conti- continuously we are not aware of it upanishads make us reassess our experience and how to how to living in that world of experience how do we correctly negotiate through the traffic of uh, these stimuli so that we can come back to ourselves so first step is are you first idea was given there are two in the inside the body in the cavity of the heart now they are elaborating the other one the enjoyer who is the enjoyer technically the one who is identified with the body the mind and the senses and who is this here it says sansari uh, sansari ti ahur manishana sansari who is a sansari sansari means he who comes and goes he is subject to transmigration birth death rebirth again goes on day night day night day night day night every day they are coming and going every day they are coming and going is the sun coming and going no <laughs> is sun equal to day and night all the days and nights put together no is sun dependent on day and nights expression or non expression no it is not dependent sun is independent oh i saw the sun during the day you know there is light there is no darkness but at night i don't need the sun. i don't see the sun the darkness has covered the sun can darkness ever cover the sun is it possible not possible then where is the sun stupid your earth has turned around sun is there only same thing happens to us so waking activity sleep no activity in the day time activity in the, at night no activity same way waking when do you wake up oh i do night shift fir baat alag hai when the sun comes up we normally wake up when the sun comes up but there are some people who work at night <laughs> uh, 
देखो सो हु आर यू क्वेश्चन इज टेक अनदर एग्जाम्पल इज द मैन और द वुमन अफेक्टेड बाय द रोल्स दैट दे आर प्लेइंग आर द रोल्स इंफ्लुएंसिंग द मैन एंड वुमन येस इफ यू आर आइडेंटिफाइड विद द रोल्स सी इज द सन आइडेंटिफाइड विद द डे एंड नाइट नो सो नो इन्फ्लुएंस सो हु आर यू इफ यू आर आइडेंटिफाइड विद बॉडी माइंड एंड सेंसेस then it will influence your decision forget decision it will influence you are a, you are a trans migrating soul as long as the thought even one thought of body senses or mind is there in the mind in, in, in you identification is there with them till then mukti is not possible liberation is not possible sir when i go to sleep i don't have any thought of body senses and mind you are liberated every night you are liberated the only shortcoming there is i don't know <laughs> so go into the sleep wakefully there you are anyway we are still suddenly i jump into the conclusion we are only at the indriya and senses so here important point to remember is the enjoyer is the one who is uh, now i was taking the example of man woman and the roles that you are playing now who is disturbed by the husband or the wife is it the man or woman disturbed or is it the husband or the wife disturbed with re- with reference to the wife husband is disturbed man is not disturbed so what has happened the man has forgotten that he is the man he has got identified with the, the woman or the wife and with reference to wife he calls himself husband and that husband who does not exist is miserable and also the case, uh, wife case wife is miserable woman is not miserable exactly the same way who is the enjoyer the one who has identified with body mind and senses that is if we are right now we are there so we are the miserable one are you the miserable one or are you the sachidanand swarup you didn't get married you didn't get children you didn't study you didn't get a job you didn't buy a car you didn't invest to become miserable you interacted you married you buy new clothes you buy what do whatever you are doing every action you have performed in your life every relationship you have created in your life is only for enjoying ask yourself has it given you the joy that you are looking for swami ji aap you are pushing salt on our wounds you know don't be so truthful thoda thoda <laughs> don't be so blunt but it is so it is see so first we have to determine where we are understand this is the principle principle is consciousness identified with body mind senses is the enjoyer if you are the enjoyer you will become the doer also because once the memory goes in the enjoyment goes in it becomes a memory to repeat that memory you keep doing more and more activity this has to be undone 
इस गुत्ती को खोलना है दिस नॉट हैज टू बी अंडन दिस नॉट इज ऑफ द करता एंड भोगता डूअर एंड एंजॉयर एंड द डूअर सो हियर इज एज वेर आर वी ना विवेक इन हा कंटिन्यूइंग एटी एट एटी सिक्स एटी सेवन हाँ नही केवल से आत्मन भोक्तृत्व भोक्तृत्व अस्ति बुद्धि बुद्ध्यादि उपाधि कृतमेव तस्य भोक्तृत्व सो द प्योर सेल्फ the the unidentified self just like the pure sun un, unattached sun similarly the pure self it is not the, uh, the, the he does not enjoy he is not doing anything he is not the enjoyer he is of the nature of joy <laughs> understand atma is of the nature of anand सच्चिदानंद स्वरूप आनंद स्वरूप जॉय स्वरूप ही डजंट रन आफ्टर जॉयज ही डजंट वॉन्ट जॉयज सो न ही केवल से आत्मन भोक्तृत्म अस्त इंडीड ही न ही इंडीड द आत्मा इज नॉट द एंजॉयर सो बुद्ध्यादि उपाधि कृतमेव तस्य भोक्तृत्म सो वेर इज द भोक्तृत्व भोक्तृत्व इज बुद्ध्यादि उपाधि कृत बिकॉज ऑफ हिज आइडेंटिफिकेशन विद द उपाधि उपाधि मीन्स कंडीशनिंग्स वॉट आर द कंडीशनिंग्स द पंचकोशा और दियर इट इज द सेंस इज द माइंड द बॉडी एंड द इंटेलेक्ट ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ दैट इज द भोक्तृत्व the bhoktrutva enjoyer kartrutva the doer who is this i am the i am the enjoyer i am the doer to enjoy i keep doing who is who is expressing as the doer and the enjoyer i where is the i in the intellect where what how who is this i in the intellect this i in the intellect its original position it is it is the reflection of the pure consciousness remember the first verse light and shadow it is the reflection of consciousness but it is forgotten that it is of the nature of consciousness and because it has forgotten it thinks it is the body it is the mind it is the senses and the game begins which game if you take ownership it is a miserable game if you disidentify the game will continue but it is an enjoyable game it is called leela but if you identify it is a painful one it's a miserable one nahi kevalasya atmanah bhoktrutvam asti buddhyadi upadhi krutam eva tasya bhoktrutvam tatha cha shutyantaram kevalasya bhoktrutvam eva darshayati dhyayati va lelayati va ityadi so here he says that uh, where are we so we already saw that the absolute self or the pure consciousness cannot have the enjoyership uh, 
uh, and its enjoyership is created by the uh, by the limiting upadhis senses mind and intellect etc and thus uh, uh, the, 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 there is when he says tathacha shrutyantaram uh, there is another shruti in which and in, uh, in another uh, shruti meaning the uh, the veda or vedic text in vedic, another vedic text which, which shows the non enjoyership of the absolute self and that shruti is brahadaranake upanishad which we have not i have to study that and uh, we are taken i have taken only one verse in panchadashi out of that so there it is told dhyayativa uh, and uh, lelayativa it means it thinks as it were and shakes as it were who thinks and uh, shakes shakes means moves i am moving i am uh, uh, talking i am listening i am seeing i am hearing. this is thinking only all this is foolishness this is not what uh, what your role is understand how ego is coming up hunger comes you say i am hungry you did not create the hunger you did not create the blink of the eye you did not create the vision you did not create the seeing hearing touching feeling tasting none of this activity you created but what has happened we have succumbed because of our self forgetfulness we have succumbed to these senses we have succumbed to the mind so all this is all this is is it possible for absolute self because you cannot have two selves <laughs> the chariot only one self is there so is it possible in you this body chariot to have two selves were said so but it was only as if is it possible for the sun to identify with day and night not possible is it possible for pure self the absolute self to identify with body breath mind intellect not possible it is not possible this is the this is the rule it is not possible is it possible for eyes to identify the color and form not possible they only illuminate and the next one the next one the next one the next one is it possible for mind to identify with any thought no the the mind is only the 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 field on which one thought comes stays and goes away one th next thought comes stays and goes away third thought comes stays and goes away it is mind is not identified with any damn thought so who is identified some idiot <laughs> that's you and me who where is he as if as if it thinks as it were it imagines as it were what is it what does it think and what does it imagine i am the body i was born i am going to die i i am a, that imagination take it further i am the husband i am the father i am the son i am old i am young and this 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 thing keeps going on it keeps spreading ignorance keeps spreading its ignorance but there is this identification is not possible it is not possible so where is man identified with woman as husband and wife and vice versa where at the body level no at the sensory level no at the mental level no then where only in imagination 
ओनली इमेजिन आई आई एम अ पतिव्रता वाइफ only in imagination if you want to live in imagination good but have that imagination from see that imagination as the lord sees it not as the individual lord is never miserable individual is only miserable <laughs> dekho only few tit bits of joys here and there because that's why he is enjoyer individual means enjoyer evam cha sati vakshamana radha kalpana kalpanaya vaishnavasya padasyaatmataya pratipatti rupapadyate nanyatha swabhavana swabhavan atikramat so here it says evam cha sati vakshamana radhakalpa with this imagination of the uh, the the chariot uh, 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 example analogy uh, one can attain to that vaishnava pada yeah, vaishnavasya padasya atmataya and see whether you take vaishnava pada as the lord narayana the ishwara or you take it as the the supreme self is the same and how do you take it here it says atma atmataya atma atmataya pratipatti rupapadyate upapadyate pratipatti उपपद्यते तो आत्मभाव एंड व्हाट इज दैट आत्मभाव दैट बाय टेकिंग दिस एनालॉजी ऑफ द सेल्फ एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग इन करेक्टली वी कैन कम टू डिसंगेज कम टू डिसआइडेंटिफाई फ्रॉम द हियर इट इज नॉट रिटर्न आई एम एडिंग दिस वर्ड डिसआइडेंटिफाइड इट इज नॉट गिवन इन द भाष्य here it is just said through this analogy of the chariot one can come to the vaishnava pada one can uh, as long as he is subjectively approaching the topic this every lecture i keep saying subjective 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 where are the senses taking you objective hmm who is this one moment i mute everything ha ah. ha ah. that one can come to know the come to know by this subjective approach one can come to know the self or one can come to know the vaishnava pad uh, the, the 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 ishwara uh, and that is your true nature your true nature is the absolute self that absolute self is called as the vaishnava pad see and that that absolute self can by nature it can never identify with anything don't forget the example sun can as much as you may imagine sun can never identify with day and night as much as you can imagine the water can never identified with identify with the waves or ocean as much as you may imagine the gold can never identify with the uh, ornaments it is not in its nature before during after it was always gold this is the atma so when we take this example of chariot we will come to recognize that there this so called 
the the self has got identified with the body senses mind intellect and he has become the and he is called the enjoyer because the wise people say that scriptures say that are saying that but this there is no one no no person like that it is not possible only why the self can never identify but i am experiencing it now that's your problem that's why you are listening to the upanishad you want to undo the undo this unholy union either why i am saying unholy because it is a source of misery to us lord does not say that uh, 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 the brahma vishnu mahesh they are along with uh, saraswati vilakshmi and uh, parvati they don't say it is unholy union they see it as their own extension they see it as their own uh, ardhangini but are you seeing from their eyes you are identified with one body you are identified with one uh, uh, set of senses you think that your mind is unique and it is better than all other minds but what is the truth in dream your mind is the mind of all the people in the dream isn't it true your mind alone is expressing through all the bodies and senses and the minds and intellects and life expressing through every body in your dream if you keep contemplating on that example also and try to see how that is possible that is happening here also that this whole world is not separate to me the mind alone has is expressing as that everything will be sorted so what is the nature the just as the nature of the gold is to shine the nature of the sun is to give light the nature of a uh, uh, fire is to burn you can never change the nature of any anything similarly the nature of the self is that it can never be identified with anything it is complete it is not lacking in anything the na- the nature of the self is it is nitya shuddha buddha mukta swarup it is self knowing it is self luminous it is self established it is beginningless and endless anadi ananta that is the nature true nature of who we are and what are we living as tu tu mai mai continuously arguing continuously fighting continuously judging continuously in the survival mode continuously complaining continuously unhappy you have to be you have to be convinced that by nature you are ananda swarup you have to be convinced with this verse that by nature the absolute self can never identify with body breath mind intellect senses it can never now 
once you accept that with about yourself that i am the conscious principle i am conscious nobody outside me i am i'm working on myself i am conscious person and this consciousness is untethered it cannot be identified it cannot be limited it cannot be conditioned it is not the enjoyer it is not the doer it is not the waker dreamer sleeper it is what it is first accept that about yourself now where am i right now <laughs> the thought of my daughter troubles me the thought of my son troubles me kab shaadi hogi kab bacche honge when i will become ah oh, gone okay how do i come back are abhi to just now i said to myself that i am i can i uh, uh, reasserted that i am the consciousness and consciousness can never get identified with anything suddenly i am talking about identification don't allow those thoughts to prosper in your mind keep thinking i am the unattached one don't think i am not the body i am not the mind i am not the senses wo soch ke again and again thinking like that is not a solution because the moment you can you can hypnotize yourself that you are not the body but when the hypnosis hypno hip, the the session is over are teri ki again the body pain has come again the hunger has come again the uh, again it will be problem that's what happens after meditation no you come out of meditation oh my god i thought i was realized in meditation what again the world is still there are kya yaar ayo <laughs> this thought must have gone through your mind many times in meditation you feel you are there oh sachidananda om aa kholi to pata chalta hai reality kya hai that where you left there you have come back ay the ay garbad ho gaya what is that called self hypnotization because object identification with objects how is that identification with body breath mind intellect and senses was not given up if meditation is happening as a result of contemplating that i am of the nature of consciousness then there is a possibility of complete annihilation of individuality not otherwise hmm so now here our uh 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 so this jiva who is identified that person who is identified is called the jiva who are you the atman who is jiva according to what we have read atman identified with body breath mind intellect senses is the jiva is this identification possible no then where is this identification happening imagination then what do we have to do we have to undo the imagination how do you do undo the imagination from many ways you come to one become clear except that you are the untouched one that you are not the doer you are not the enjoyer you are not the ego what is its consequence happy for no reason remain happy for no reason under all circumstances life will keep happening senses will eyes will keep seeing hunger will keep coming waking dream sleep will keep going on but there is no one owning it there is no one owning it if you own it you are the ego the jiva you are the identified one if you don't own it 
here the supreme it's that easy yes it is that easy now in the verse 5 6 7 8 the purpose uh, of this and an, uh, of this analogy of chariot is given what is the purpose why this chariot example is taken that's why it is told a lot of points i must have already covered it in the explanation but we'll look at it again we'll chant the fifth verse yastva vijnanavan bhavati yastva vijnanavan bhavati ayukte namanasasada ayukte namanasasada tasyendriyanya vashyani tasyendriyanya vashyani dushtashwa iva sarathehe dushtashwa iva sarathehe together yastva vijnana van bhavati ayukte namanasasada tasyendriyanya vashyani dushtashwa iva sarathehe he says here that uh, one who is always where are we? Yahatu, Yahatu, Avignana van Bhavati, Ayuktena Manasasada. Meaning, the, the, the one who is always having an unrestrained mind. Meaning, the one whose mind is ye khaun ke wo khaun, ye dekhun ke wo dekhun. How many likes I have got? How many people have responded to my message? How many people are listening to me? How many people have put it on the Zoom and gone to sleep? <laughs> Always worried. This worrying, this this uh, oscillation, oscillating mind is the unrestrained mind. What is happening? The reins of the horses, they are not tight. They are loose, moving up and down. Wherever the horse turns, there the reins also go. unrestrained mind is the charioteer is not strong enough to keep the reins of the horses under his control the bala is not there he is weak how does strength come through discrimination if discrimination is not there if you are after enjoying enjoyment that if I eat food, I'll get joy. If I go to get married, I'll get joy. If I go to movie, I'll get joy. If I go to America, I'll get joy. If I don't get sick, then I'll be happy. You know, you, that means you will never be happy. You are only wishing that if these things don't happen, then I'll be happy. And it will not happen like that. So intellect is weak. Discrimination has not begun. So, the one who has the unrestrained mind and, and no right understanding. Here he says, Bhavati uh, ayuktena uh, manasasada ayuktena that you Yoking. Yoking means, you know, yoke. The, where is the mind yoked? Where are the reins yoked? Manasasada. 
where is the mind yoked mind is connected to the horses but mind the reins the reins are connected to the horses when they are connected to the horses they are at the mercy of the movement of the horse but the reins of the horse the reins they are also connected to the intellect they are also yoked to the intellect if the intellect is strong how will the intellect become strong you make the right decisions you hold on to the higher you think about the subjective self you contemplate that you are the uh, un the uh, sachidanand nitya shuddha buddha mukta swarup you think of ways ideas where you are falling short why that your why that true nature of yours is not shining forth why again and again the karta and bhokta they are coming then you instead of oh karta and bhokta are coming because i am identified with body breath mind intellect and senses can you do anything no i'm going to take my eyes out no you more problem i'm going to cut my ears more problem i cut my tongue more problem that is not the that is that is a, a aghori sadhana so you can't do anything about the senses you can't do anything about the mind mind my, if the mind intellect is holding the mind on the other side one side is the horses on the other side of the mind is the uh, intellect question is which is stronger senses are strong or the intellect is strong find out assess it in yourself that are my senses stronger and sway the mind here and there i don't feel like i mood nahi hai understand the mind is under the sway of the senses under the horses बट मूड नहीं है पर यह करना है जस्ट नो नो मोर थिंकिंग अबाउट मूड नहीं है वॉट हैज टू बी डन हैज टू बी डन यू आर इन इंटेलेक्ट इंटेलेक्ट इज स्ट्रॉगर आई डोंट फील लाइक गोइंग टू सत्संग आई डोंट फील लाइक कुकिंग टूडे हबी कैन यू डू द कुकिंग टूडे आई डोंट फील लाइक big ego trip what is required to be done has to be done must be done without complaint joyfully then purification happens so intellect must be decisive is it is it running after is it if it is if it is unsure of itself if it is unsure of itself then horses will become powerful <laughs> if intellect is sure of itself then the horses will be under control through the reins when does music come when the wires on the guitar or the sitar or the veena when they are loose then the music comes but when they are taut if you tighten it too much the string will break if you tighten it less there will be no sound coming it has to be at the right tension then the music comes out of the uh, strings the strings are like the reins too much tight the horses will stand up oh hey, we give up oh the chariot will collapse if you put it too much tight if you put it too much loose the horses will will 
all go in different directions. Again, the chariot will collapse. The reins has to be at the right tense tension. That only an intellect, uh, 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 a discriminative intellect is able to bring that about. So if the chariot has to turn left, then what will happen? The intellect, the charioteer, he will loosen, he will pull harder on the left hand horse and he will let the right hand horses, the reins a bit loose and he keeps this tight and he loosens these ones. Then the whole chariot turns smoothly. That acumen is intellect. As a child, you learned all this. You burnt your finger once. You learned how to negotiate with fire so that it becomes your slave. It serves you rather than you get served by the fire. <laughs> it doesn't become the boss. You remain the boss of fire. In childhood, one experience of electricity, current, you learned how to negotiate, how to deal with the electric points or wires. You became the master. After so many years of life, is our mind restrained? Here it is told that one Ayuktena manasa sada, if the mind is always manasa sada, always sada, manasa mind, ayuktena, it is unrestrained always, uh, uh, then, then uh, the, uh, and, and uh, what do you call, uh, avignana van bhavati, then, uh, right discrimination will never happen. Then right discrimination will not happen. Then second verse says, Tasyendriyane vashyani dushtashwa iva sarathehe We'll just, con time ho gaya uh, The second line says, His sense organs become uncontrollable like the vicious horses of a charioteer. We'll look at it in our next class from this point onwards. And then we'll do the bhashya of this particular verse. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari hi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari hi Om Remember